myself and many like me who have been meditating for you know, well over 20 years, sometimes we do this for a very long time and we really don't have any idea why we're doing it. So one of the most commonly asked questions of the meditator in the middle of a difficult sitting period is, why am I doing this? <laughs> So really, I'd like to give a talk on why we meditate. First of all, we do not meditate in order to be comfortable. Which is to say, we don't meditate in order to feel good. I hope shock waves are passing through the hall. (laughs) If the purpose of meditation was to feel good, most of us would feel we were doing it wrong most of the time. (laughs) The purpose of meditation is not to feel bad, however. You'll be glad to know. but really to have an open, compassionate attentiveness to whatever is going on. So an image that's often used is like a big sky, just allowing a lot of room for anything to arise and dwell and pass away. Good and comfortable and pleasing and difficult and painful and unwanted, all of this. So the essence of the meditation is training in something that is pretty radical and definitely not the habitual pattern of the species. And that is to stay with ourselves no matter what is happening, without putting on top of it labels of good and bad, right and wrong, pure and impure. So if meditation was about just feeling good, I think all of us secretly hope that is what it's about. And therefore, a very common experience of the meditator is in a typical day, you know, or a typical retreat when you're feeling bored, restless, when your back is hurting, your knees are hurting, your mind is hurting, you feel like you must be doing it wrong because it's such a difficult experience. So I think that's the main thing to get through your head. (laughs) Get it through your head that it's not about feeling good. It's about a compassionate openness or a kind of ability to be with oneself and one's situation through all kinds of experience. So it's sort of whatever life presents you with, you're open to that. And this is pretty radical. This is common to all Buddhist meditations. It's about touching the earth, as I say, or coming back to being right here. And I think that's also common to various other kinds of meditation as well. But certainly not common to all meditations because they're are also other kinds which you may prefer, which are more about achieving special states and somehow transcending or rising above the difficulties of life. But this meditation that we're doing and the whole approach in terms of widening the circle of compassion is an openness of the heart and mind to the difficulties and the joys of life, just as it is right now in this very moment. 
just to make it maybe easier to remember, I'm going to talk about five qualities that are over the months and years as we meditate, qualities that are being nurtured and come forth more and more as we meditate. And so when you ask why are we meditating, the first quality, what we're doing when we meditate is to cultivate or nurture steadfastness with ourselves. I was talking to someone about this and they said, is that sort of like loyalty? And in a way it is like loyalty to oneself. And actually it's steadfastness with oneself which translates immediately into steadfastness or loyalty to one's experience of life as one finds it. So let me talk a little bit about this first quality of steadfastness because I think it's so important. It means that you sit down to meditate and you experience what's happening in that moment, which could be speed, mind just going 100 miles an hour, body twitching, bumping, and, you know, very like that. That's it. That's what you experience. And sometimes you can sit there for an hour and it doesn't get any better. So then you'd say, bad meditation session. (laughs) Right? That's what we say, right? I just had a bad meditation session. But the willingness to sit there for the 10 minutes, the 15 minutes, the 20 minutes, the half hour, the hour, however long you sat there, that is a compassionate gesture of developing loyalty to oneself or steadfastness with oneself. Do you see what I mean? You're sitting there, your mind is going wild, you're very speedy. You know, if you reflect on it, you say, yeah, this is a bad meditation experience or I didn't chill out the way I thought I would. And so we lay a lot of labels, opinions, and judgments on top of what's happening. Well, that's why you just let those thoughts go and you're just there. I mean, that's why the training is to do that. So in a way, part of the steadfastness is that when you notice that your mind is going a million miles an hour and you're thinking about all kinds of things, there is this uncontrived moment that just happens without any effort of just coming back. And at that moment, if you catch that, then you say thinking and you're just right there. So, you know, people love to tell the story of they sit down with this dedication to do the practice and then all of a sudden out of nowhere comes And they've been thinking the entire time. (laughs) But at that moment, you catch yourself, right? So one out of, you know, how many ever seconds that was is not bad. (laughs) So the idea isn't at that point to say, ah, You know, I blew it. And that moment you realize that you were thinking the whole time, and that's it. There's a growing awareness of what's going on. So in one sense, it's this growing awareness. It's important when we ask why we meditate. It's this developing or nurturing, bringing out this quality of loyalty or steadfastness or perseverance, whatever word you want to use. I like to use words that have some kind of compassionate sound to them. But it really means willingness to stay. 
And that is very revolutionary and very unhabitual and not what we generally do at all. And so we're training in this.